Hey guys, my name is Scoby. Today I'm going to be showing you how to remove a background from an image in Adobe Photoshop. Now this is going to be a quite easy little tutorial and you just have to follow on step by step. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up the image you want to remove the background from. Now this is a random image I found online. I will leave a link to the full res version in the description down below if you want to follow along and actually do this image with me. Now for most people, when you open up an image, most people would say, I don't know, just grab the rubber tool and uh, rub out the background with just the eraser and you can work your way around the image like that and this method will work just fine but there are more effective methods and methods that offer more flexibility in post and the method i'm going to show you right now is probably the most effective and the most flexible method to use while trying to erase a background from an image in photoshop this is something that everyone should know how to do it's a really handy technique and a really handy guide to follow so the first thing we're going to the first thing we're going to want to do is open up the quick selection tool which is up here or w on the shark or w on your keyboard and we're going to select the quick selection tool now if you've not used the quick selection tool i'm going to give a quick breakdown of the quick selection tool it will select areas of an image that are similar in color and uh, saturation so for example i'm just going to highlight some of this area right now and as you can see it kind of selects the area that is similar around here so i'm going to deselect that by holding Control and d and i'm just going to explain a bit more about this tool now you can scale up and down this tool by using the open and close brackets beside the p button on a normal keyboard so if i hold the right bracket it will open and if i hold the left bracket it will close and you can see that in the center of this tool there is a plus sign if i hold alt this sign will change to a negative, which means we will take away parts of the image. So if I hold over this, you can see that we subtract some of the image, but if I unhold Alt and just use the normal tool, it will be like an addition tool and we can add parts of the image that we want to keep. So in this instance, hold Alt to remove parts of the image that you don't want and unhold Alt to keep images. Now this can be different on your PC and it'll depend on how your thing is set up, but I'm going to hold Control D one more time and we're going to get into actually how we remove the background. So we're going to be using our quick selection tool with our plus in the middle and we're going to start selecting parts of the, the subject. In this case, it's this woman that you want to keep in your image. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start in the head and work my way down. Um, now where you start position is really up to you. It's just a matter of selecting the parts that you want to keep now don't worry about being too uh, accurate in this early stages we can get back to it at a later stage to tidy up parts that we don't want to keep in this i would just select to make sure you have all the parts of the subject that you want to keep in and just continually highlight until you get it all so right now we have all the parts of the woman that we want to keep in this porch in this picture but we have some of the parts of the picture that we do not want to keep in as we can see down here we have some of this uh, like grass and weeds and stuff that we don't want to keep in and we also have some stuff over here in the bridge so this is where our minus tool comes in handy so if we hold alt we can bring up the minus and we can deselect parts of the image we don't want so if you slowly hover over photoshop will kind of smartly uh, give a rough idea of what you don't want so by scaling us our uh, tool down right now we can come in here and just be a little bit more accurate to remove parts of the image we don't want now, of course, this can be changed later if you really want to with the eraser tool. Sometimes the eraser tool can be more accurate, but this tool offers a bit more flexibility and you'll see more later on in the tutorial why this is. So I'm just going to continue going around the image to remove parts of the background that I don't want to keep. And this, I would recommend trying to be as accurate as possible for this part, um, just because it saves so much hassle later. Um, but like if you make a mistake and you're just not bothered fixing it, it is possible to fix it later without too many consequences. It just, this is, I don't know, I find it peaceful. My normal method for uh, removing backgrounds is normally using the eraser tool, uh, mainly because I don't need the flexibility as much, but I was but like this should be people's main method of removing backgrounds. Um, I also find uh, just using the eraser tool peaceful. I normally just put on some music and just rub away like there's no tomorrow. It is, I, I kind of enjoy it. I use a lot of rubbing for uh, tutorial or for my uh, thumbnails and just removing a background just has, it has, it just offers so much uh, potential and flexibility for a lot of, a lot of, a lot of anything you can use in Photoshop. Even if you're a beginner, intermediate, any stage of uh, your Photoshop uh, premise, it's, it's good to just know how to do this. So I am pretty happy with how this is right now. Um, I think I have taken out most of it, except this little nibbly bit here. I've taken out most of the background and I have most of the subject that I want to have selected for this tutorial. So our next step is to click the refine edge tool, which is at the top of our window. And we're going to click refine edge, which is going to open up 
this little window which we get a couple of different different options to play around with to make our image look a bit better so as you can see right now it's fairly jaggedy and it's fairly rough so i'm going to go over a couple of the tools that you can use to make it a bit easier so our first tool that we're going to be uh showing how to do is the view tool on the top now this gives us a couple of different options to show the image as normal with the uh the checkered lines around it you can have the overlay where it has red in the background to remove it you can set it to a white black or a transparent background now i prefer i like using transparent the most but this is up to you whichever way it looks better to you so in this case i'm going to use the transparent background now the shift edge tool is pretty helpful the shift edge either takes away or adds from the area of our checkered line so if i bring it out it's going to add thickness to around our checkered line if i bring it in it's going to make it a bit uh like inwards towards the line now i typically don't play around with this tool too much only if i want a bit more beefiness around the image which in this case i'm going to play around with it a little bit just to show for an example um, another tool that we can take advantage of is the smooth tool so as you can see right now this is pretty rough it's actually pretty smooth overall but it's 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 still a bit jaggedy so our smooth tool is just going to run over that and make it a bit smooth and a bit more tidy you can also see the little kind of black shadowy parts around the edge is where our shift tool is coming into play. So I'm actually going to take that down a little notch. I'm just going to leave it at zero for right now. And you can also play around with the feather tool, which is going to feather around the edge. But I would use this sparingly as it's really not effective. Uh, in most cases, it can be effective in when there's hair or fur. Um, but in this case, there, it's mainly just like a uh, dress. So I would leave that away. And we are going to set the output to new layer with layer mask. And this is where all the flexibility comes into play, where we can still add parts to the image if we want to. And we can still take away parts without too much of a negative effect. So if we select output to new layer with mask, we get to keep our original image in the bottom, which is just hidden. Uh, it's just turned off in the layer selection right now. And we get our new layer with our layer mask. So I'm just going to rename the old one to old. And I'm going to rename my new one to new. Uh, this is just so you can kind of work your way around the image. Now, next thing, I'm going to show where our flexibility comes in handy. Let's say, for instance, we wanted to keep this bridge. I'm after doing all this and I'm like, well, shit, I, this bridge is essential to making this look good. So what I can do is I can re uh, open up my old layer and I'm going to turn the opacity down on it to about 60-70%. This will depend, but you want to turn it down to low enough that you can still see it, but not low, not low enough that you can uh, still work on other layers around it. So once you have the opacity turned down on this, you're going to come to your new layer and click on your layer mask. Now, once in your layer mask, if we grab a white brush, anything that is white on this layer is going to be re-added to our layer. So I'm going to grab the white uh, white color, uh, a pure white color up on the top left. And I'm going to grab my brush tool. Uh, so you can select it over here. Or you can click B. And I'm going to start painting in to our layer. I'm just going to make my tool a bit bigger. And I'm going to start painting in uh, the on top of the layer in white. And I'm going to start painting in where the bridge is. Because the bridge is probably the most vital part of this image right now. I'm going to put it to a full brush. And I'm just going to paint in because I had it on a semi-soft brush there. And I'm just going to start painting in. This just has, This doesn't have to be perfectly accurate right now. It's just for an example purpose. Um, but you can be as accurate as you want in your own image, depending on what it's going to be used for. Um, but we're just going to paint in around the bridge because the bridge is going to be a vital part of our image. Now, I'm going to just finish up here a little bit more because I'm a stubborn little shit. And let's say we're happy. Boom. Lovely. What I can do is hide my old layer. And there we go. We've added in our bridge just like that. It's it's it, This is where the layer comes in handy because we have more flexibility to remove and add parts of the image without having to go back and then rebrush around. This is where this has the advantage over using a normal rubber. It has the advantage of having more flexibility. And it's just, I think it's, it's a more advanced technique, but it's still very simple and it's really easy to use. It offers more flexibility and you still keep your original layer, which is nice in the background. And you, all you have to do is paint over it in white. So anyway, guys, yeah, that's how you remove the background from an image. And you can obviously put this in any other picture if you want. You can put her in a volcano. You can put her in any, you can put her in a, in a Justin Bieber concert for all, for all you want to do. There's so much more flexibility when you do it like this. That's that's the method I would use to remove the background from a picture. 
Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and if there's anything else you want to learn to do in Photoshop or any other software, let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, until next time, guys, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.